what you've achieved at such a young age is incredible. I worked so hard to get to where I was and, and this is what I get. When he first started talking about it, I was looking at him, like, oh my God, I'm like, oh no, like. Somebody was like, they are literally sitting in their bedroom leaving you a hate comment and you are Lord Sugar's business partner. So like, why should I let it get to me? How do you feel giving up 50% of the business? Yeah, I can, I can do business, but like. You like, have a billionaire as a mentor. Pretty, pretty much, much, pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just because you come from somewhere that's not where you want to be doesn't mean you have to stay there. There's so much more to do and there's so much more growth. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the CEO cast. Now, this is episode one of season four. We are back and today my guest is a female boss. I'm with Amani Zubair, the owner of Tresor. And today we're gonna to talk about her journey, how she got in touch with Lord Sugar and started to be a business partner with him and the whole, everything you need to know. Before we get into this podcast, I need to ask you all to please press subscribe and drop a like on this video as well. Help us out a ton. Thank you. Amani, how's your day going? Me? Really? All good. How's yeah. yours? It's very good, thank you. Nice to be in your office today in Birmingham. Thanks, my this, pink office. This totally isn't the second time that we've done this podcast. No, not at all. <laughs> no, so let's let's touch on that. So obviously we, we've spoken for quite a while now. Yeah. Uh, we recorded once or four, but the something happened where we couldn't post it. Technical issues. Yeah, so yeah. if people have seen the intros of season three one, they would have seen you were the very first person oh, yeah, on that yeah, intro. Yeah. So it's kind of like a sneak peek anyway of who you are. So... I mentioned that, you know, your Lord Sugar's business partner, I mentioned Trezor. So how about you explain to us in the audience what it actually is? So Trezor is a demi-fine jewellery brand. Yep. It's a jewellery brand that focuses on making jewellery that looks and acts like real gold. Mm -hmm. But for a market that is like pretty much me, like younger people, people who like gold but can't afford to have like an armful of gold bangles. Yeah. It's like, it's about bridging the gap in the market between like wanting to look like you're wearing gold, but not being able to afford it. So yeah, as we can see on, on display right now, that's an example. So that was yeah. what, and necklaces always. and bracelets? Yeah, yeah, necklaces, bracelets, rings ma mainly are the ones that we focus on is because we do yeah. a lot of marketing around like, oh, you can wash your hands with them on and nothing happens, like yeah. that kind of thing. It's and you've like, got one ring that you showed me last time. Is, uh, my F off ring. Sorry? My F off ring. Yeah. yeah. Have you got it on? Yeah. You can't really see it, but... Um, no, you can't show it like that. you got to... I'd show you like this. you got to take it off. No, you've got to put your midfinger up. No! <laughs> yeah? <laughs> no, joking. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, you know, entrepreneur, how old are you? 20 now. I was 19 when we first filmed, though. That would have been a better story. <laughs> okay, so I've known you for a whole year now, basically. Well, pretty much. Yeah. So, what does it mean to you to be a CEO, entrepreneur? Oh, gosh. Um, that's a big question. It is. I think, like... Okay, I think people forget, right? Mm. I am literally only 20. Like, I have been in this for a few years, but not the way people would think. Like to be a CEO and to be an entrepreneur, I never call myself a CEO, first of all, by the way. Mm. I find it, I just find it difficult to put that, giving myself that title, but- um, But you call like, yourself an entrepreneur. I am an entrepreneur, yeah. yeah. But um, not the way like- Explain what you mean by that. Like when you say not the way that people think, what what exactly? Like, okay, you think entrepreneur, you think businessman, like put together, you've got everything going on. Like for me, when I got into this, I was absolutely winging it. I was like 16 when I first started planning this. Yep. For me, in the beginning, it was like, uh, all right, dad's not giving me lunch money this week. Let me get some, let me find a way to make a little bit of money. Like that's all it was. Yeah. So it's kind of grown with that. And as, as like I've gotten older, the skills have come, but not like, not like completely, you know what I mean? Like the way I do my business is like not um, completely to the T, everything. I was winging a lot of it. I still do wing a lot of stuff, but mm. obviously now I've got a lot of sugar on board. It's a little bit different, but it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. So Trezor, is it your first business that you started? No, uh, kind of. So I think Trezor started from the money that I got from uh, reselling like on Depop. Yeah. So I guess that was kind of a business, but um, Trezor is my first proper business, yeah. So what was you reselling on Depot? So uh, all sorts of stuff, like clothes from like charity shops, like yeah. um, not shoes, just like clothes. Like so was it was stuff. it a case of buying that stuff and selling it for that purpose or were you just basically flushing out your wardrobe? Or? No, no, no. So I was buying and selling it for that purpose. So like, okay. um, I think I, like I said this last time, but um, yeah. what happened was when I like got to college, I was like, because I had been shopping in charity shops and stuff like that anyway, like um, when I was younger and... When I got to college, I'm like looking at these people, I'm thinking like, oh, like, that's a nice jumper. That's a nice, like, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And so, oh, where'd you get that? Oh, ASOS, it was like 70 quid. I'm thinking, what? I saw that in charity shop for like 10 pound. Like, this is like, you know, this is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all clicking for me. I'm like, okay. So, so I gave it a go and it started working. I made a little bit of money, not a lot. Like I didn't, I didn't like, you know, at the time you don't think like the fees, the shipping, the blah, mm. blah, blah, whatever. So, you know, you make like five pound here, 10 pound there, but money is money when, and especially when you're 16, you're like, oh, I made 20 quid today. That's amazing. Like, yeah. that's just how it was. Like, it was just a little, little side hustle. So you're making money then. So talk to me, what was your upbringing like? Cause you, you seem like you've always had a business mindset. 
like an entrepreneurial yeah. mindset of making money, you know, starting your own business um, yeah. and, and doing any means possible to, to get that money, obviously, in your case, selling on Depop and now you've got a trussor. Yeah. So you started at 16, but what was what was your whole upbringing like, you know, from, from being a kid yeah. to, to now? Well, um, I have, well, okay, my parents are very, very different to each other, right? Like my dad's an academic and my mom's like kind of entrepreneurial, kind of like a bit of a hustler, I'd say. So I was very like um, brought up, but like my parents, like uh, I, did, I lived between my parents. So when I was living with my dad, my dad was really focused on education and like mm. go to college, go to uni. And the main thing was that I wanted to get a job, but my dad at the time, obviously he got a strict Asian dad, come on. Like he's like, nah, go to college. You don't need a job, like focus on your schoolwork. Yeah. So to me then it was like, okay, now I got to think like, how do I get money without having a job? So that's kind of where that came from. But I've always, I've always looked up to like stuff that my mom's been doing. Like my mom um, is very like, uh, like a project manager type. Like she does a lot of putting things together and building things up from scratch. And yep. that's like kind of where the idea for like, no, you can start from nothing and, and it can become something kind of came from. So where did Trezor come about from then? So Trezor. What's the story of Trezor? The story. <laughs> so this is a bit cliche. Like if you're, if you're Asian as well, obviously you are like, you probably know and you see like your mom's bangles or like the gold that gets handed down to us. Like, that stuff is so beautiful. But when you're 16, 17, you want to look at it and you want to wear it, but you can't afford that. Like genuinely, like, like. Just explain it to me. Cause obviously I'm a boy. I'm a bit oh, different. Sorry, yeah, so I don't really bad. know how much it costs anyway, but yeah. if we're talking like gold down, yeah. I don't know, uh, one of the streets, something like that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? What, how much does it cost? A lot. Like it depends. Like um, jewelry can, like a gold bangle, a solid gold bangle might be like a hundred pound or something like that. Yeah. So that, that's my, maybe a cheaper one with like a, a not so much intric intricate design. Mm. But when you're younger and you see that stuff and you're like, I want to look like that, but you can't, who's got a hundred quid to spend on a bangle? Yeah, like, yeah, especially when you're younger, yeah. Especially when you're younger. Yeah. And and you don't really want to wear the gold that you get handed down out because what if you lose it or what if whatever, like it's yeah. scary. So it kind of came from wanting to look like I could have that gold and 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 you know, all girls have a bit of jewelry, like a bit of sparkle. Like that's kind of where it came from. Mm. And I wanted to, to bring like jewelry that's, that's gold, looks gold, acts gold, but is not gold. But it was really, really difficult in the beginning. That was not what my jewelry even used to look like. It was very, very different. So this is not what your jewelry used to look like in the beginning? No of. way. Like <laughs> I, oh gosh, I made so many mistakes. When I was like 16, I was like putting, um, I'd find like, oh, Google wholesale gold charms, wholesale gold chains, yeah. uh, chains and I'll get them. I put them together and I'd be like, yeah, this is amazing. This is so nice. I would sell it, yeah. And uh, like two or three weeks later, I'd get an email. My neck has turned green from your jewelry. I've got a rash. Okay, so I've that could be the effects of cheap gold. Yeah, okay. I was like, oh, oh my god, no! Like I was so sad, and like you, you think like, gosh, what do I do? Like and then, and then it keeps coming. Like everyone's complaining. Mm. It's a whole lot of like refunding, apologizing. Yeah, and then it's like figuring out, okay, what do I do now? And it's then it's like that was my kind of um, product development stage where I kind of learn this is the metals that this happens to, and this is what that happens to. So like you know your typical high street jewelry, like say. Um, Primark or whatever, mm. it's affordable. It might look like gold for a bit, but when you put it on, there's brass in there, there's copper, nickel, lead, like that kind of stuff. Those metals, materials. They're not good for your skin. Not at all. Okay. Especially if you've got sensitive skin, you can yeah. get rashes. Like you see, there's like, you see people that make jokes in it, oh, fake chain, green neck, like that kind of, that yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And obviously, because that's where this is coming from. Yeah. So then you learned that at what age that you need to do like change your materials? Uh, seven, about 17, yeah. 17, okay. Yeah. So that was like almost like a year into Trezor, right? No, um, so Trezor officially launched when I was 17. Mm. But I was in the planning stage for a while. And then... So you done... Did you do all your research and, and you know, of materials and everything before you actually no. officially... Okay, now so you just launched and you would go... I was like, yeah, done. And then I started making money. I was like, yes. And then it was like, oh no, like yeah. it's just so bad. But I think I've been... I still do, you know, research and development like to this day. Like you yeah. figure out what's going on. Like um, I changed my stuff to stainless steel and then I changed it to double plated. So it's got like 1.2 microns worth of gold on it. Yep. And like... That only happened like like couple like maybe a year ago. Mm. Everything is always changing, developing. There's always new things. There's always ways to find like what's going to work better than what I already have. What's going to be the best quality that I can bring for the best price. This is this is why I rate your story fully because obviously we've known each other and your story is actually inspiring for someone who's especially young. Yeah, what you've achieved at such a young age um, is incredible. I mean, obviously being an entrepreneur, you're probably yeah. thinking there right now, thinking I haven't actually achieved much. 
obviously, because <laughs> you probably have a lot more of a, a lot vision. more to go, yeah. A lot more to go, yeah. But I mean, someone in my shoes right now, if I accomplished what you accomplished at 19 years old, I'll be sitting here thinking, you know what, looking back, I, I actually did very, very good. So <laughs> I mean, I became Lord Sugar's business partner when I was a teenager, so. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, yeah. So I mean, stuff like that. Not that's, to toot my own horn, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's inspiring though. Yeah. But to you, obviously you got much more vision. So what does that feel like then? You know, what does it feel like? How, how do you look upon yourself? Like you said, there's so much more to do and there's so much more growth. And like, Trezor is not my only thing and it will not be my only thing. Mm. And for me as well, it started as I need a little bit of change and it, and it developed into this is what I have and this is what I can do with it. And this is what Trezor is about is like being able to, like I, I have like a team now, right? Yeah. And it's like, I... I am responsible for people's livelihood and, and I like can give opportunities to people. I can work with people that, you know, may have not had opportunities. I can work with people like myself. And, yeah. you know, we work with like um, influencers and our customers and stuff like that who, you know, are um, like minorities or, or anything, like mm. not your typical people that you see in the limelight all the time. Yeah. And it's amazing to be able to bring that. It's like a, a movement of, of um, like diversity kind of thing. Yeah. And it's nice as a young Asian woman myself to be able to work with other young Asian people and, and people of color. It's just like- Representing. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Representing the culture. Now, you know, whenever I talk to someone about you, mm. we've got like saying, I'm doing a podcast with Imani Zubair. Mm. They always say, she's really good at TikTok. She's really good oh. at Instagram reels and stuff <laughs> like that. So obviously you're you're quite big on you TikTok. Yeah, yeah. I'd say, yeah. Little. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about this whole journey, but I mean, you know, you, your stock sold out because- mm. Because you had a video, and I believe it was like your first or second video on TikTok. No, it wasn't my first or second. Wasn't it? I'm no, pretty no, sure no. we were going through it. Was yeah, like... yeah, but because uh, I delete a lot of my old videos. Okay, okay. I just keep the viral ones, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it well, was you like, had a video, yeah. yeah. It was a couple months into TikTok, actually. Yeah. It was, took me a while to get there, but when I did get there, it paid Blue. off. And yeah. that got to four and a half million. It might be more today. What's it on now? Like four and a, yeah, probably four and okay, a half. Four and a half yeah. million views yeah. on TikTok. And I'll let you explain the story of how, it, what the effect does that happen? And, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Oh gosh. So this video, when I posted it, it was like slowly going up. I was like, okay, I posted it about 9 p.m., which is my normal time for posting. 9 p.m. And then, you know, I go have dinner, whatever, I put my phone down. And then I'm in bed and something happens. And my phone, basically, if you've got Shopify, yeah, oh gosh, I love Shopify. If you've got Shopify, when you get a sale, it goes ka ching, like it's so nice. It okay, has like, like a sound effect. Yes, yeah. it's okay. so nice when you get a notification, right? So I'm in bed and my phone's like, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, I'm getting like a lot of sales. It's like, and it's like 10 in a minute. I'm thinking, oh, this is nice. Like, yeah. you know, my video's probably got like 50K views or something. It's got a lot of views. My video's on like 100K. It's going up. Like I'm refreshing. It's going up by like 10, 20, 30K by the minute, every minute. Yeah. And my phone is like blown up. I'm thinking, what's going on? Like, what's happening? And um, like, I'm thinking, oh yeah, my phone's, my, my video's going to get 500K. It's going to get 500K. Little did I know, like four and a half million it managed to get. And a lot of my a lot of my viewers at the time, because it was like really late at night, it was like past midnight, were like American viewers. So I was getting like yeah, international orders. Yeah, because obviously the time, yeah, time's on there. Yeah, yeah. so I was getting international orders and stuff like that. But my phone was basically blowing and then mm. it froze, right? So I couldn't I couldn't turn it back on and I couldn't get it back on till the morning. Yeah. And when I got it back on, I looked on my website, everything on Shopify was sold out. Every single thing I had was gone completely. I had like... I don't know how many orders should I check. I had yeah. so many. Can you check the history and everything, yeah? Yeah, should I show you? Okay. I don't even, I'll show you exactly how much I made that day as well, but while, I literally- Yeah, go on, while you're checking that, so yeah. what would the stock value have been if it had sold your, out your whole website? Well, we'll check now. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to do, sorry guys, we've got to have a break. You know that like SpongeBob thing where it's like <laughs> five hours later. later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was my very first time that I blew up, right? And it was like, um, Mind blowing. I did not know what was going on. This is that. Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah. yeah. So you could literally see the big spike. Yeah. Cause it was and literally yeah. all the way up. Yeah. I had never even in my, in the history of my business, in my life seen that much money. Yeah. Like for me, it was like such a shock. And then it was like, okay, gosh, hang on. Now I've got to pack all these parcels on my own. Cause look, it's like 600 orders. Yeah. I'm like, I move everything down from my bedroom into the kitchen. Everything is covered. The whole kitchen's covered. I'm like picking and packing parcels. Then I run out of mailers and this happens, that happens. Then I've got people complaining. It's like, um, obviously it was a great thing and I was grateful that it happened. But I wasn't prepared for it because I never thought I would ever see that much in one go. How much were you seeing on like a monthly basis sort of thing? Back then, 2020, yeah. like maybe like two grand, three grand. Okay, and you basically got 15 grand overnight. Overnight pretty much. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And at that point you were still on your own. Mm-hmm. And this brings us to the point of where we're at today. I mean, yeah. like I said, we're in your office. Yeah. My office is a little bit of a mess, but I'll show you. This is my little warehouse space. 
is where we keep like the stuff. This is where all the packaging happens. So I have two separate rooms. So I have my studio. Sorry, we're running around. This is my studio. Oh wait, we're gonna show it separately. Sorry. Yeah, I'm cool. your, I'm your thing. No, no, that's cool. And then I have my production room where all the fun stuff happens. We've got um, gold plating, we have cutting, printing, everything, laser stuff, everything. And then, yeah, this is pretty much my, my little messy office. Beautiful. So you've got a whole team behind you now? We do, yeah. Yeah, how many people have you got behind you? Uh, Five, about five okay. of us, yeah. Sweet. Is all of you working in here? Yeah, some freelance, some in the office, like yeah. everything. That's a year on from, from that point, basically. Not well, a year not on, less that was than a year. No, no, that's August okay, 2020. Sorry, I keep forgetting we're in 2020. 2022, yeah. yeah. Uh, two years away, yeah, but you moved in here in September. Yeah. Uh, did you have a team before then or when you moved in here, did you get your team? So I had a team. My team started March 2021. Yep. That's when I, I moved into my first office. I moved everything out of my home, moved into the office um, and had two two people. Hmm. And then a third, then a fourth. And then I was like, we're, the, the office was like the space of like, size of like my kitchen now. Hmm. And it was full of stock, full of people. We're all like packed in there. Oh, it was horrible. <laughs> but it, it it was like what was happening at the time. So we kind of just went with it. But um, then we moved into a bigger office and now like we're here. Hmm. No, it's a beautiful to be fair. I mean, you've got your product department over there, yep. like you were saying. I'm guessing that's your office, your desk right there. That one in the corner. I that live in the, the little corner. corner. Do you love the corner, yeah? Yeah, I love the corner. Okay, I thought you would have liked all the lights uh, no. around you and the windows and everything like that. No, no, no. Mostly I work from home. Like I don't really even come in that much. Like, Is it? Yeah. Oh, fair enough. And then you've got, obviously, if you look and see behind me on camera, you can see yep. all the, the warehouse section as well, which should get car shots. But um, yeah, I mean, where, where do you think this all come from? Was it partly due to Lord Sugar becoming your business partner? So the business itself was growing nicely. Like it would have carried on growing yeah. the way it was with or without him. Um, the reason I took him on as a business partner was because I wanted it more for personal growth. Yeah. Like I thought, yeah, I can I can do business, but like, you can learn so much more from so him personally. Much. But from someone who is literally like 50 years older than me, been yeah. in business for longer than I've been alive. Like yeah. I can really pick things up because- You like, have a billionaire as a mentor. Pretty, pretty much, much. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because like I, I dropped out of uni, but I never stopped learning. Like yeah. it's always picking things up from Lord Sugar, from like anyone from everywhere. There's always, there's always like a, 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 a bigger picture to just other than having him as like a business partner. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that because obviously the articles that I've read and everything, they all state that you, it's, so this has got nothing to do with your apprentice, right? Yeah, so how does someone, because obviously everyone sees that you have to apply for the apprentice and yeah. become the winner and you get to get in business with Lord Sugar. You skipped all of that. Yeah, pretty much. And My mum always says I won without going on the show. Yeah, so do you, what you, you, want with you're, that. <laughs> you're a winner in that sense. And you, you've, I, I don't want to put this discredit on any of yeah. the apprentice candidates, but I mean, you you just blew way past them. You didn't have to do any other tasks. You didn't yeah. have to say, you stand in front of him and say, you're hired or you're fired, yeah. something like that. That would have been scary. It would have been. Um, he's so, scary, don't get me wrong. He's yeah. still scary. Like. Like, it's probably more scary when he's got a finger pointing at you. Yeah. Then, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I even feel rude doing that myself. Yeah. But yeah, So, but let, let's talk about that. So the whole experience of you reaching out to him and you know where did that all transpire from? So, uh, I don't, funny enough, I, I don't really even watch The Apprentice, but mm. my mum does and... Um, one day she was like, oh, you could do that. Is he going to get mad at you saying that? Hope not. Sorry, Lord Sugar. <laughs> no, he was like, uh, no, my mum my was like, you could do that. And I was like, no. I was like, no, I can't. I'm not going on TV. Like, that's not happening. And um, Was it a case of you being shy or you just didn't want to do it? It was like, I was really scared of like being in the public like that. Especially like I was like uh, 18. Okay. I'm thinking of God, I don't want to do that. Like that is bad. Like people people are crazy. And I think I was reading stuff in, in the newspaper about like Lottie, that woman, and, and people saying stuff about her. Like she's this, this, this. I think, oh my God, imagine someone saying that about me. I'd be so sad. Like yeah, yeah, I wouldn't sure. be able to handle it. Mm. And so I, I don't know, randomly I just went on Lord Sugar's Twitter. I'm like stalking him because he just posts like loads of stuff on that. It's hilarious. But uh, I saw a tweet during, this was like during lockdown. And he said, um, like small businesses reach out to me or something like that. Like, oh, I'll give you advice or something. Mm. Um, so I went on his website to try and find an email. I couldn't find his email. So then I just started emailing random emails. I'm like, I'm like this crazy woman, like put me in touch with Lord Sugar. I want to talk to Lord Sugar, blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like, I'm not getting responses. Uh, so, and then one day I get an email back and it's like Lord Sugar in capitals. Like literally just, just says Lord Sugar is the title. I'm thinking, oh my God, like what the hell? They're probably going to shout at me like, no, you can't <laughs> talk to Lord Sugar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an email from him. He's yeah. like, listen, um, because uh, I had explained who I was in the email, like myself in the email, the business, whatever. What I wanted, I wanted some advice. I wanted to talk to him. And um, he was like, listen, like, I like what you're about. Um, come to Loughton, let's chat. Like, let's go, like, let's talk. Mm -hmm. So, okay, cool. They were like, come in two days. I was like, 
okay. So I booked my ticket and I traveled like three, three and a half hours from Birmingham to Loughton. Yep. And um, I met him and I was 40 minutes late. <laughs> And they, and he still gave me an offer on that day though, so it didn't matter, but I was terrified. I was really, really late and, and I didn't know what was gonna happen. Like I, I thought this was just like gonna be a chat. So when I went up, he was sat there with like his advisors around him, like an accountant or whatever, a management accountant. I'd already sent them my accounts previously. Like they wanted to, he wanted to have a look. I don't know why I didn't clock well, them just there. Just to see full information of the business basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally gave him my management accounts and, and I didn't I didn't clock that maybe he wanted a, a stake in the business. Well, like, I mean, true, true say, I mean, if, if someone in, in their content creative world wanted to see my accounts or yeah. views back end sort of stuff, I mean, you might just think, okay, this is how they're going to be able to analyze it to yeah, give yeah. me advice. So, I mean, yeah. you know, you wouldn't yeah, yeah, so think twice about it. He just was like, um, he was there for 10 minutes. Obviously, I was really, really late. That's why he was there for 10 minutes. And then he's like, all right, I'm going Paris now. And then he left. And then I was sat there with his advisors and stuff. And they were like, okay, look, we, we want to uh, invest in your business. Like, yeah. go, go home and think about it. At that point, as soon as he said, we want to invest, I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Done. All right, done. What, did you tell them, yeah? or No, no. I was like, okay. yeah, I will go home and think about it. I had yeah. already decided. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm yeah. having it. <laughs> like, <laughs> now, yeah. from, from going from, from uh, you dropped out of uni, like you said. Yeah. Um, now telling telling your dad or your parents, you know that information yeah. of Lord Sugars now want to be my business partner. Yeah. Um, because I know you mentioned to you previously, we obviously we didn't mention it in this podcast, but you didn't tell them that you dropped out. Yeah, I didn't. I I don't especially not my dad because my dad, like I said before, is an academic. Like he's very much like stay in education. Mm. I had mentioned to him before, like, oh dad, what would you, you know? Um, I'm thinking of taking a gap year. I'm thinking of this. He's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, okay, I'm not. Like you know. Yeah. And um, he. So I told when I told him it was like I'd come back from Loughton. I was like, Dad, can you pick me up from the train station? He's like, Yeah. I'm like, Okay, Dad. Uh, I've dropped out of uni, but Lord Sugar wants to be my business partner. He was like, What? Did he know you were meeting Lord Sugar? Yeah. Yeah, he okay. knew I was going down there for mm. like some advice. And uh, he was like, What? He was like, What? You, what the hell are you talking about? Like, yeah. he was like two. I dropped two bombshells at once, right? So I didn't. I didn't get a bollocking for like um, dropping out. But there was also that shock of like, What are you? Have you just said like? Yeah. So I think I was lucky in that sense that I had a bit of backup. I had, I had you know, Lord Sugar to fall on to say, look, he's trying to be my business partner though. So, you know, it's fine that I dropped out. Um, but it was a shock for him, of course, because he wanted me to be in education. And, and that is the route that obviously most Asian families want you they to take is yeah. going to education, yeah. get a degree. And it's scary when you're like from a, a different generation that thinks that you need a degree to succeed, to, succeed, to do yeah. anything in life. You need, to, you need a degree to fall back on and have a job. Because like, I think still like, you know, anything can happen. I could, I could uh, lose everything just as quick as I got everything. And, and you know, mm. that's kind of what the fear was for them was that I wouldn't have a degree to fall back on. But I don't know, I, I never had that fear. Like I was like, I will figure something out, whatever. So. Yeah, hey, it was working to be yeah, fair. <laughs> so far. Let, let, let me ask you though, being young, you're only 20 years old. Yeah. And with, with this level of success that you've got at such, such a young age, it could be very easy to fall down the path of, of, not doing reckless shit, mm. but almost like being a bit wild because you've got the yep. money there to back you. So how do you, obviously you're a very humble girl, very nice girl, lovely to meet, all that sort of stuff. No, thanks. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is how do you manage to keep yourself down there of, of the, you know, being humble and stuff like that? So I think um, I always remember my upbringing, how I was brought up, how, how I was raised, where I came from. Mm. And for us, it was like, I don't come from a rich family. I don't come from like, you know, I've always had a, a roof over my head and food in my belly, which for which I'm grateful, but I don't come from like, you know, a family that has spent money or, and my dad's like, you know, a bit, a bit stingy, bless him. I love him, love him. But he's like, we're not spending that money on that. Like I yeah. never had like designer clothes or, or new clothes even. Or, oh gosh, it's not like, no, no. It's, here's my sub story. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's, carry on, carry it's not on. bad. It's not, it's not, a, it's not bad. Like I had a good childhood, but um, I just don't come from a lot of money in it. So I don't, I never have this feeling of, I need to spend this money here and that money there. And I, I just like, I don't know. I just have never been like that. Because, I just, because like, if someone was to give uh, someone, a, another young person, a lump sum of money, hmm. um, you know, there could be times where, you know, if, if you drink, you're going out clubbing. Hmm. If you want to get a car, you're buying a Ferrari. You, you could do so much reckless stuff because you're young, haven't got much life experience to think, hmm. okay, this money is going to last X, Y, Z. So it's it's amazing to see what you've what you've done with it as well, and how you've come about with keeping it. I don't know. It's not. Uh, it's just not for me. It's not my life. Like I like. Um, for me, it's about. Okay. Yeah. In the beginning, it was about like wanting a little bit more, a little bit extra money, and getting to where I wanted to be too. But Trezor is like a means to something else. Mm. So for me, it's like Trezor is one thing, one one source of income. I have others, but 
the, the I want to do more. Like I want to do like, obviously you, you, everyone gives charity. Well, I don't know if everyone gives charity, but like giving charity is one thing, but like there are, there are other things that I want to do that, that I want to help. Like, oh, I don't know. Like for me as a, as a young woman coming into this world was like business, the world of business is really, really scary. It's terrifying when you've got no life experience, when you've got no one behind you who's like that. And I want a platform where it's easier for young people, especially young, young people of color to be able to, to do something. And that's kind of like where like the money will go towards like being able to help others, help others basically. Yeah. And it, it's, I don't know, like it's not, my life is not about money in it. It's about having enough money to live comfortably and, and, and have, you know, freedom and time yeah. and being able to do good things with your time. Like that's just Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you, you do certainly do quite a few of these podcasts, you know, you got your own content creation going on as well. Yeah. So what's, what is the message that you're trying to leave people? So I think I've just started being able to, um, develop this kind of side of stuff like I've been able to step a little bit back from Trezor now that I have a team yeah. and try and build a, a platform for something else and so I'm working on my personal brand and with that will come like you know that just because you come from somewhere that's not where you want to be doesn't mean you have to stay there mm-hmm. like if you come from a certain background a certain ethnicity a certain mindset doesn't mean that you need to stay well obviously same ethnicity you don't need to stay in that mindset like you you don't need to always be there and and there should be channels for growth other than you know uni and stuff like that because it's not for everyone it's really not like not everybody can do it and not everyone wants to do it and why should we talk to ourselves doing something that's not good for our mental health if it's yeah. not no i think i think our generation is going to be the generation where we don't push our kids so much to yeah. go down the whole uni path and everything because i think we see the way the world's going and the the power of being an entrepreneur mm. as opposed to you know going to get a degree and all that sort of stuff yeah so i think we're gonna our generation is gonna be different in the sense where we're not gonna be telling our kids you must go to uni yeah son. exactly <laughs> it's not, I mean? no way now that you know lord sugar's invested into trezor you know you've got a team behind you it's no longer or oh, i would say in my opinion it, it, the home feeling factor the home business mm. you've grown out of it obviously but your whole business was kind of with the four and a half million followers it was almost built upon that right mm. so then how do you sustain that keep that home value within your business so i think with uh, the content creation as well i have a lot of my uh, team involved like i'll have the girls in the tiktoks mm. or and and i'll always keep it authentic it's always been me and it will always well not probably not always but it will be me for a long time yeah. because i am where it came from like it's trezor is me and like i'm trezor like we're like it's the same thing basically yeah. so when i put my face to it or like you know now we build a nice community between us and like specifically like um customers and influence are people of color like it's easy to, to kind of build that because that's that's who i am basically yeah, it's like sure. found a market fit like i fit that market so it's easy for me to be part of it so that's how i can keep it authentic and keep it kind of yeah. like a homely feel and you mentioned something else there earlier on you said your is just one source of income yeah so what else do you do <laughs> lots of stuff because we didn't talk about this before oh, i don't sorry. think we spoke about it at all um, off camera whatsapp whatever it is Lots of stuff like uh we have a family restaurant we have well i do my content creation as well like um i work with brands like natwest and things like that like um to do tiktoks for them i did well before trezor my job was in like website design so like if mm. i ever want to do money i'll stick myself on fiverr and get like a little bit of money like it's like that like there are lots of things i do um i, I downloaded buy nuts on my phone so i'm a crypto oh, babe now gosh, i'm a yeah. crypto babe no nah, i'm not but i'm trying i want to learn it anyway. everyone does yeah, it yeah, i want to do it as well yeah. like yeah. <laughs> but um are you interested in it or are you interested in the figures talk about on it um i try i've been doing it a couple of months now like mm. how, trying to figure out what's going on like how to do it yeah i'm i don't know if I'm interested in it or if it's just the money, it's probably just money in it. People saying that you shouldn't like keep your money in your savings account, it just depreciates. So like, I just- Yeah, it does, it does, stick yeah. It, stick it on Binance, see if I can do anything with it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, when, when did we meet up? What month was it? Uh, Jan. Jan, Jan, yeah. yeah. So were you on Binance then or- yeah. you, Okay, so you basically, so how's your experience with it then? It's all right. Yeah, it's yeah. been about a good month. Are you making money or? I have no idea. Are you t- no, I'm scared. I'm actually scared. Like, do you know what it is? The anxiety of checking that app. I'm like, oh my God. But sometimes it's like all the way down, but then like a couple of weeks later, I'll just be back up. Like, did you put a like, huge lump sum in it or what did you do? No, just a little bit. Okay. Little do you bit. want to check it on camera? No. No. <laughs> just check it. I just want to see. No. Okay. Sorry. Not happening. <laughs> okay. Oh so God. then, yeah. So you're now a crypto gal. I am. Um, what else then? Content creation is a massive one. So, like, yeah. a lot of my. Um, <gasps> Shit, Royal Mail, I need to take the bags down because my girl's not here. Do you want me to help you? No, no, no. Are you sure? Yeah. That is the of oh, that actually happened on the podcast. And just like that, she's gone. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Bloody oh, hell. Oh, breath. Oh. 
I actually chased him, like genuinely. You know, I'm actually keeping that on camera yeah, in the podcast. No! <laughs> yeah, I promise you, because I was so natural of, of the actual life of an of a entrepreneur, of a business owner. <laughs> it's because my girls are not in today. So I had to take that myself. I'm out of breath. Go on, catch your breath. <laughs> like I said, it's all right. I said I'm a gym lad, but like, not like that. <laughs> that is so bad. So yeah, you said um, a content question, your biggest one then. Yeah. So what do you do? Okay, so, um, yeah, source of income. So my, like my main one is content creation. So it's mostly the money that I get through um, kind of ads, kind of like creation for like, I do stuff for like uh, metal, netwares, like them kind of brands, mm. finance stuff, business stuff. And who brings you these brands? Do you go out yourself and, you know, They recent? contact me. Okay. I don't have a manager or anything yet, but um, and obviously my social media presence is not massive. Like mm. it's only like, you know, 20 something K on TikTok and whatever. But I think a lot of these brands have started clocking onto using... The, the smaller influencers rather than the big ones because yeah. where is your engagement is more or less the same as, as a thing uh, like a, let's just say someone with 500,000 followers and it gets 5,000 likes mm. that's only 1% of, of yeah. you know the thing whereas someone like yourself 30-40% engagement roughly something along the yeah, lines yeah or even better I mean? because if it hits a for you page it hits a for you page and it's exactly, amazing yeah. and they, they do a lot of stuff that like um like they want they want authenticity they want that like you know mm. that small business feel like they love that yeah so that's why i do a lot through um it's so funny that small business feel i love it they always say that as well to me it's like oh we love we want to support small businesses and blah 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 mm. really it's because they want to try and undercut me and not pay me a lot but like yeah you know you do your thing and you you get your price that you want and want to be paid but um so do you do a lot of them or, or how frequent is it uh it depends on, on the size of the project so sometimes i'll get a project and it will be like uh, like three or four videos. Yep. But then they'll want a, like a period where you don't work with any of the di their direct competitors. Okay. So like four weeks before, four weeks after. Yeah. So then it kind of like puts a little bit of a cap so on. So if you were working do. with like, for example, Sage Accounting, mm. they wouldn't allow you to go and work with um, other books. Yeah. Something I like think. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just two competitors. It they would sense, say yeah. after you, you have a, a exclusivity period. Yeah. Which obviously you charge for your exclusivity period as well. Mm. But, um, yeah, it does, it does kind of like get a little bit in the way, but it's usually fine. That's interesting because obviously I, I know content creators make a lot of money. So here's an interesting question. What brings you more income, the resort or the content creation? So salary wise, mm. more content creation than my resort salary. Yep. But the dividends are something else, different look, different um, thing. Taxman's might be watching, might not be. Shout out to you. Listen, you <laughs> Listen I'm, I'm business partners with Lord Sugar. Do you think he's not got a big, massive team this big that looks at all that stuff? Like, yeah, yeah, true say, yeah. He deals with all that. But um, and now that I'm business partners with him, we take dividends like like once a year. Yeah. So it's not like I can just like remove money from the business anyway. So, mm. so that's why I have different streams of income. How do you feel giving up 50% of the business? Not that bad, you know, like no? everyone was like, oh my gosh, like, you can't give away 50%. You started this. Like, I was like, whatever, like. Yeah, because if, if someone asked to, to take 50% of the year cost for whatever value they're bringing, I still think in a way... Okay, I'm think about it like this. If it was Stephen Bartlett, he said, listen, give me 50%, would you yeah, take... Yeah, yeah, different, yeah, different exactly. story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, that's what it was. It's yeah. like, this is a billionaire that has like so many years experience growing things from the ground up. So the value of the money that you'd be getting per year, it didn't mean anything once you knew Nothing. that basically he was coming on board. Yeah. Mm. I didn't care. I did not care. I was like... I was like fifty percent of one business. What's that? Yeah. Uh, this is not. I'm. Nothing, I'm. Yeah. I'm eighteen. This, well, at the time I was eighteen. Yeah. This is not the first thing I'll ever do, and the last thing I'll do. Like there'll be. Yeah, and like you, things. like you said as well. I mean, you, you do. It won't stop at Tresor. Mm. So, what do you, what do you want to do otherwise after? You got any plans? You got anything in your head that you think that would actually be a good business? There's or? some some stuff in the works, but um, nothing nothing like set. You know, like sometimes like. Your best ideas come to you randomly. Yeah, hundred percent. It'll just come to you. Randomly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And 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 even Trezor kind of came randomly a little bit as well. Like mm. you, you know, connecting the bangles to like starting a business. That's mm. how it was. And um, yeah, I like, just I'll think of something at some point. But w would you? W okay, so you don't have to. Obviously, I can mm. kind of see that you've kind of got something in your mind. And you might just not <laughs> want to say it, which is fair enough. But is it different to jewelry? Yeah, yeah. Completely different. Completely different. Like, I love doing so many different things because. Like for, for, for Trezor, it was, like I said, a lot of research and development, a lot of learning. Mm. And and I love that. Like, I do love learning, even though, you know, I'm a dropout. I do I do love, and it's like this, it's every day in business, you realize how much you didn't know yesterday. Like, there are so many things that you, you figure out along the way and that you learn. And things are always, always changing. So for me, it's like that thrill of like, things are always going to be different. Like, I, I'd love to get into, take different avenues. Like, look, content creation was different to um, Trezor and then like, you know, we've got like the family restaurant, like that's completely different. That mm. was new for me as well. I was like, how do I, 
set up a restaurant. I don't know. So who owns the restaurant? So um, me, my mum and my uncle. Okay. There's a restaurant in the UK? Yeah. Yeah, yeah whereabouts? In Birmingham? Yeah, Harborn. Is it? Yeah. Well, is that what it's called or is that? Is no, it it's in Harborn. That's the area. Okay, cool. But um, yeah, yeah. so my uncle runs it and obviously we set it up and like uh, had the idea and the branding and stuff together. And it was, it was fun. Like it's like a fun project. Mm. I like projects and I like to always be like, okay, this is what I want to achieve. How can I achieve that? So. What sort of food is it? It's a burger restaurant, isn't it? Come on. Oh, is it a burger? Everyone's got a burger restaurant. Uh, you know you want to go? I'll take her. Yeah, yeah come, come on. on. <laughs> I've got to try this after. Um, one thing I want to move on to is obviously, you know, we've mentioned so many times that you're young and successful in this yeah. year. How is it with finding friends or, you know, having friends around you from, from day one? Has anyone changed? Has anyone's attitudes and behaviours changed when they've found out that you are now this successful 20-year-old? Yeah, um... I've What's never it like with the boys one. as well? Huh? What's it like with the boys oh, as well? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so I went to an all-girls school, funnily enough, and um, I never was one to have, like, a lot of friends anyway. Like, always a little bit... I was never popular or anything, like, a little bit, little bit, little bit weird, like, that kind of... Mm. Um, so I was never massively popular and had a lot of people around me that I needed to be wary of. And then when I went to college, like, oh, yeah, a couple of friends here and there, but I always... I had my head down. I was getting things done. And obviously I had Trezor as well. So it was... I never... Oh, I don't want to say I didn't have the time, but like I didn't have the time. Like I was just so busy all the time and my mind was always on other things. So it's it's it was difficult for me to to make like meaningful friendships. Yeah. So when we went into lockdown, I was very, very isolated. Like I was very, very alone. And I had just I only had Trezor, and that's why I think Trezor is where it's at now, is because I didn't have distractions back then, kind of thing. Yeah, 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 for sure. And then um like now, like uh like just before kind of Lord Sugar and stuff like that, when I first started uh, with my personal brand on TikTok and stuff, that's when I started making like good friends, like other business owners, other mm. people that are a similar mindset kind of thing. You kind of met these people online, don't you? I met them all online. All yeah, my yeah, closest yeah. friends, I met them online. Same like, with me. Uh, yeah. I've ever met them through the podcast or met them yeah. online. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's difficult when you, because um, at your school, there's so many people and not everyone is like you, but when you're online, you can really find your community of, of people that you want to be like or, or you want to be friends with kind of mm. thing. Like, um, yeah, all my best friends like I've met through TikTok or Instagram or stuff like that. Yeah. And um, like, it's good to have other business owners on board because I find like, I have I have other friends that are not business owners, yeah. but it's difficult um, to be friends with people who are- Who don't get it. Who don't get it, yeah. Okay. It's like, why are you awake at 4 a.m. looking at Shopify? I have to be. <laughs> I have to be like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, and, and you, you can't explain it. Like, especially because of my, uh, my age, obviously I'm only 20. The people that I went to college with are at uni now and, and I have my friends that are, are at uni and stuff like that, but it's like, they live a very, very different life. And because we can't relate on that level, it does cause like clashes and things like that sometimes. Like sometimes it's like, like okay, for example, if I wanted to go Paris right now, I could. Mm. Obviously a uni student can't really do that because they wouldn't have the funds for it or they, they would have uni or something like that. So it's like, I don't know. I think the money having the money also brings its problems, especially friendship wise, because you have to be wary and you have to be careful. And obviously, like if I spend a certain amount, I don't want to do it in front of a friend who who can't because that's just like horrible. It's mean, isn't it? Like It's kind of showing... It, it, I don't want to show off. Like, yeah, that's of the, course the it's not your intention to show off, but people might see it in a way yeah. it's like... And they will see it like that yeah. because that's just, that's just how it will come across to them. It's like yeah. they, everyone will think, oh, uh, like, you know, I want to do that. Yeah, like, of course it's a kind gesture to treat someone to food, but then yeah. you don't want to think them to think that oh this person thinks they're balling where, yeah 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 yeah. You know like I mean? I've had that as well so with friends it's like oh no it's fine girls I got it I got it I got it and I get the bill or like whatever and then it, it can come across like has it, has anyone ever said to you hey Marnie here's a bill pay it more kind of um not here's the bill pay it more kind of nobody gets their card out <laughs> And they're just expecting to pay out. Sometimes, sometimes, I don't know. Like, it's because, I, like myself, even before, like, I had money, I've, I've never been one to be stingy. Like, I don't care. Like, mm. uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get it, I'll get it. Like, I, I'm like that. Like, I like to be like that because I just like to. And I think it, it's bad when people start to expect that of you. Take advantage of it. Yeah. Mm. And it's easy to get taken advantage of. Like, I've had people do it. And it's, like, not a nice feeling, but then I would rather... Like, for example, if somebody does that, some, no one gets a card out, I'll just do it because I don't want to ruin the waiter's day or something. Or Do you know what I mean? So, I don't know. Sometimes, but not everyone. I do have good friends as well, like, mm. but not not everyone's mean, but not everyone's great. And what about like relationship wise and stuff like that? It might. Do you would you think it would be difficult for you to find? Wait, are you single? Or you take like. Where would I have the time to be taken? Like, listen, okay, yeah. so this, this is my listen. point. So, yeah, so this is my point. You know, yeah. you're, you're obviously working hard to, yeah. you, you ain't got time to be taken. Yeah. So then when it comes to a point of you, you know, wanting a relationship, yeah. how do you find the right person? Because 
an entrepreneur's mindset is completely different to someone who's maybe not being an entrepreneur. Yeah. So it's got to have you got to find someone with that balance. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't know either. I'm single for a reason. I yeah, don't know how. Yeah, Where's it? Where they at? Like, uh, it's like you need to find someone who um, fits your mindset and fits your lifestyle. Yeah. And the lifestyle that I live is very, very difficult. Like sometimes I will literally be in the office till like midnight. Yeah. And you know, like imagine I had a boyfriend and I'm like, I'm like busy all the time. Mm. It, it's, it's diff- it becomes difficult. Like it's difficult for me to maintain friendships, let alone an actual relationship. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Who knows? Isn't it? When the time comes, it will come. That's what I, how I think of it. So right now you could have been in uni, what, second year, third year? Second year, yeah. So you could have been in second year mm. or you could have been an entrepreneur. Yeah. Now, obviously you chose entrepreneur. Yeah. Do you ever think at times maybe you should have stayed in uni and didn't have become an entrepreneur? Do you ever no, never. think, no, not at all? I hated uni so much. Like I, I'm not anti-uni, but for me, my first year of uni was during lockdown. But you could have, you could have avoided all the stress that comes with being an entrepreneur, mm. the late night, staying up, early mornings. All of that, and you yeah, could have been. If I avoided that, I would have a different type of stress. Yeah, I would be broke. I would be living at home with my parents. I would be struggling at uni. Like, there is stress with whatever path you choose, but you just choose the one that you want to. You want the stress of. I don't mind staying awake late and and getting things done. And, and you love what you do. Yeah, because I love what I do, and, and I'm blessed to be able to do what I want to do every single day. But at uni, I wasn't. I wasn't like myself. Like I wasn't able to be who I wanted to be and do the things that I wanted to do. It wasn't proactive enough for me. Like I love to be like jumping around and doing stuff all the time. Mm. Like you see, like what just happened? Like stuff always <laughs> yeah, happens. Yeah. yeah, stuff always happens. But at uni, it was the same thing. Lecture, work, lecture, work, lecture, work. Like oh, I can't, I couldn't do it. It was like. You was couldn't like, get into the, 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 like a set schedule sort of thing. Or kind of, I don't mind like routine. scheduling. It's too repeated. Repetitive, yeah. yeah, boring. It was boring for me, and and I wasn't stimulated enough. Like I need to really be like always working all the yeah. time. That's why I dropped out as well. Yeah, because it's not enough. Like it's not it's not for everyone. It is for some people. If you want a, a certain way of life, that's that's completely fine. But it was just was not for me. That's all. Do you know what? I didn't even drop up, drop out. I, I got to a point where they kicked me out because oh, nice. I was just like <laughs> I, I got there and I was just like yeah, I really can't bother to go there. Yeah. But I still used to go to uni because obviously I tell my parents I'm going to uni. Mm. Then we just go to the common area. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. Pool table there for another to chill out yeah. playing pool. And then eventually they clocked on because uh, my uni South Bank in London. Mm. I don't know if you would have heard of it. I don't know. Um, they sent a letter home mm. saying that oh. you're, you're being kicked out. Okay. But then obviously my parents were thinking, unis never send letters home. Yeah. So this is clearly something. They opened it straight away. Oh it? no. So they found out. Oh no. <laughs> like that. Mad story, mad story. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. That's so sad. But no, like, I dropped out before even telling my dad. Like I had dropped out for months before I told him. Yeah, you were chilling. At least you'd made yeah. the decision yourself. I know. <laughs> <laughs> At least I had the choice. <laughs> so for people watching this, obviously people are going to be very, I hope that they can see that you're an inspire, inspiring person. Um, but what What's the message you would want to leave with a young female watching this? Someone around mm-hmm. your age, maybe even younger, 16 years yeah, old. Yeah. What's, what's the sort of message that you, and the thinking they want to start their own business, yeah. just like Amani. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what what's the message you would leave them with? I think, especially, this is like, a, a, a person of colour thing as well is it generally we tend to have the families that are a little more strict a little more set in their ways we have like parents that are immigrants and, and families that are, are you know maybe backwards thinking kind of mm. thing and it's like just because you come from that doesn't mean that's all there is for you like for me living at home at 14, 15, 16 I'm thinking is this my life like is this all there is to the world and you think that at a young age as well and it's not bad but there's always that hunger for more mm. and it's nothing is ever enough. Like when you're an entrepreneur, you always want more. You always want want a different way to do things, a more efficient way, more money, more time, more whatever. And you don't have to stay where you are just because that's where you come from. Yeah. Like you can grow your, your own way. And you know what it was? Like a lot of the times I did things that my parents didn't want me to do. Like my dad did not want me to drop out of uni. I done it anyway. Sometimes you have to make that decision for yourself. Sometimes you've got to go against the grain. Sometimes you do, exactly. Yeah. And even if, even if, you know, I, I had that fear, like, oh, I'm disappointing my dad or like, um, you know, my dad doesn't want me to move out. My dad doesn't want me to do this. But, you know, you have to do what you want to do at the end of the day. It's your life. You're living it. You know, with all with things that you've done that kind of go against what your parents would have asked for, how do they feel now? Are they proud of you or? Yeah, like? I, my parents are. My parents are. And they're very, very supportive. I think, you know, my dad um, will occasionally be like, oh, are you going to go back to uni? Are you gonna get <laughs> no, dad, no. <laughs> but um yeah, my mum, my mum kind of, it's kind of sad. They wanted to see me graduate, of course. Mm. I'm the first, first child, first daughter as well. Yeah. And um, 
so so I feel sometimes guilty that they missed out on that and and I do feel guilty for going against them even if it's not necessarily wrong it's more that kind of like moral like oh no my parents said no I shouldn't do it but Mm. I did what I had to do to get where I wanted to be and that's just what I did but what's it like being a female in business then being a woman there are different things like uh physically and mentally a lot like uh, you've probably seen this thing on my story that I put uh, well maybe you probably skipped it it, but because it's like this thing that that I really think other people should know is like the working day for a man works because your hormone cycle is 24 hours. For a woman, it's over 28 days. So like for you, right? Sorry, we're going to a science lesson right now and I'm not a scientist, so don't quote me on this. But for you, it's like um, the nine to five is perfect because your, your hormone, your testosterone will peak at like your midday and then towards five, six, it starts going down. That's when you start to get tired. So that's when you kind of finish your work day, go home, whatever. For a woman, it's completely different. Like, like, um, like I said, it's 28 days, right? So towards the end, like towards like, you know, time of the month kind of thing, you're low energy, you're emotional, things like that. So like you need to, as a woman, structure your life slightly differently to the way that men do it and the way that, and I wish more people knew this. I wish more people knew this is like, you shouldn't make, I don't ever make big decisions like time of the month. I never take big meetings, never make big decisions because your emotions are everywhere. It's true. Like people will say, it. oh, she's on a period. She's crazy. Like that kind of thing. There's always a, uh, uh, you know, um, there's no smoke without fire kind yeah. of thing. So it's like physically you need to live and work slightly differently to the way that everyone thinks you should to be able to kind of work more efficiently. So that's one thing that's, that literally bothers me a lot is like the way that, people expect us to be able to work and do business the way that men do business, but it's different. It's of course it's different for us. We have biological differences. And then aside from that, there's the stuff that's like the sexism we face, especially as like a a young woman of color, they've been in business longer than I've been alive. And for me, it's like a, a constant fight and a constant struggle to prove that I can be just like they are, even though I don't look it, talk it, feel it. It's the same, like, well, obviously not the same. We've got more experience and stuff. But as a woman, you really have to be a bit more, I'd say, like... Abrupt. Yeah, and assertive. And you, you have to do that. And it can, and for women, it can come across as, oh, you're being really, really assertive. Oh, she's, she's a bit of a cow. She's a bit horrible. But you have to be like that because otherwise you, you're not going to get heard. Like, nice women get swept under the rug. Like, people, people are not listening to us. They don't want to. And you know as well, like... I always call people out on their on their stuff. Like I always call people out. This is the problem. This is what we need to address. This needs to be fixed. But it's difficult because naturally I don't want to do that. Like naturally, you know, we're the we're the more gentle, the nice, the chill. Yeah, you don't want to come across as mean. Or yeah, yeah, like yeah. You never yeah. want to do that. You never want to do that. But you you have to. And I think that's the struggle with being a woman is like if what you feel naturally, you have to change the way you are to fit in with the world that you're in. Kind you of kind thing. Kind of have to go against it. Almost. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But yeah. Have you had any, t- any situations where you feel like, well, not necessarily with Lord Sugar's team. Mm, not with, yeah. But Usually you- with them, to be honest, because they're business partners, because like we're equal, it's like easier with them because yeah. in the contracts we're equal. So they're, And they're business people, they're working to, to that. But to the rest of the world, it's like, you know, um, if I'm in meetings and stuff like that, and especially with men and stuff talking over me or like things like that, it's like, it's, it's difficult. But, mm. and I have a lot of... Um, because I'm young as well. Do you have any, yeah, go on. Honestly, I don't know everything. I don't, I don't claim to, but I don't like to be treated like, oh, she's just like a stupid little girl, like that kind of thing. And that's how it can feel sometimes. Uh, so I was gonna ask, do you have any regrets so far? Regrets? Yeah. Yeah, loads. Go on. Loads, I make so many mistakes. Every day I make a mistake at least, but that's how you grow. And and I regret a lot of things I, I, I did. Like, um, okay, one of my big regrets, right, is in the beginning, when I first started with Lord Sugar, I was all organic. Like I had not done any uh, PPC. I had not done any paid ads. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to use the investment money, put it in ads. And I found an ads company and um, I went with them. I was paying them like three, two, three, four grand a month for this, 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 whatever, whatnot. It was so bad. It was so bad, right? Because and now I have this business partner and this investor to say, this is where I'm putting your money and this is where it's coming back. I gave them this much in a month and I got back, what, 500 quid. And and then I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like what what have I done? So how many months did you have them for then? Like two, three months. So we cut them off pretty quick, but yeah. even like two, three months, come on, I'm, I'm funneling money out. Nothing is coming back in. Hmm. And how do I explain that to Lord Sugar? I'm like, listen, 
he's like, where's the money? I'm like, I don't know where the money is. Yeah. Like I, I thought this was, I thought in my brain, it was like, cause I had no experience with this. In my brain, it was like money goes in ads, money comes back, right? Mm -hmm. Simple. Yeah, no, hopefully it's more. It didn't work like in. that. Yeah. It did not work like that. So then, so the first for the first month, you, you let's just say you put in about two grand. You said, yeah, yeah, okay. And how, what's the money that you got back? So listen, it's like this: it's like two grand ad spend, yep. and then like one thousand five hundred fee to do the ads. Yeah, that's like three and a half grand going in. Okay, cool. What comes that's back? That's in one month. That's one month. Yeah, and what came back? Five hundred pound. Five hundred pound in yeah. month one. Month one. So did it not occur to you then to cut them off then? Because they said one month one is a learning period. What do, the hell do I know? I'm nineteen. I don't know nothing about PPC. I'm like, yeah, okay, learning period, whatever. Mm. Okay. Obviously, I done my research and it said, okay, this is a, le a learning period can be two, three, four weeks. I thought, okay, cool, yeah. I'll give them a chance. Go to the next month, 500 quid again. I'm thinking, what the hell are you doing? That's when I start the fight. I'm trying to cut them off. And then obviously they lock you in for a certain amount of months, right? Yeah. So then it gets to like the third month. Like, oh, God, so were you locked into like a contract sort of thing? Yeah, but we got out of it because I threw a big fuss. I was like, are oh, you having a laugh? Like, How long was the contract? I think like six months. Okay. And they were like, oh, you can carry on paying the six months even if you don't use it. I was like, the hell I am. No way. Yeah, no, no way. way. That's so Dad. bad. Yeah. So it would have been, so their fee is 1500 Yeah. Okay. Plus whatever you're putting in. Plus ad spend, yeah. Oh damn, okay. So then they expect you to, but okay, you're out of it. Yeah. So then what did you learn from that then? I I'm learned- you have new marketing agency on board now? Yep, completely different, change everything. Um, what I what I learned from that was like, no amount of research can be enough, no amount. Because I had done research and I thought, okay, what they're saying makes sense. And I learned that you genuinely, you have to make the horrible mistake to mm. grow from it. Because if I hadn't made that mistake, I wouldn't have known to be really, really wary around them. Because obviously, I'm 19, I'm like Lord Sugar's business partner. I think no one's gonna mess me around. I'm Lord Sugar's business partner. No way. I've been messed around more now that I'm with him because people wanna get at him or like people wanna think it's like a, a cash grab because Lord Sugar's involved, that kind of thing. So it's just kind of like trial and erroring and I was just learning that way really. Was there any more neg negatives that comes with being Lord Sugar's partner then? Yeah, like um, a lot of stuff like about about me personally, like when he first started tweeting about me, there was a lot of backlash kind of thing. Mm. So there was a lot of like, um, uh, I'm pretty sure I remember him tweeting about you. Yeah. Well, not so much on Twitter, but seeing articles of it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. There, there was, you know, positive feedback for, yeah, obviously course, I, yeah. I, I loved it. it was, I was grateful. Like I was ha really, really happy that people had nice things to say about me, but there was a lot of stuff like, um, someone goes, oh, another floozy for Lord Sugar. I'm like, shut your mouth. Like, come on. Like I, for me, it was like, I worked so hard to get to where I was and, and this is what I get. Like, this is what people get have to say. Mm. And it was, it's the harsh truth. It's like, it doesn't matter how hard you work. There is always going to be someone in the back, someone on their phone going like, you're a piece of shit. You're horrible. Like yeah, yeah, of course, little gremlin. Like, warriors, yeah, it? exactly. Exactly. And, and th that was like my main thing, the backlash of, of putting myself on social media and, and saying, I am one of Lord Sugar's business partners. This is what I've achieved, like blah, blah, blah. I'm building my personal brand that, I, I kind of build, I, you know, I milk, I milk it a lot. Like, you know, I'm Lord Sugar's business partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you see my TikTok. Yeah, it does work, yeah. it does work. And it has to, and you know what? It's the truth, it's not like I'm lying. Yeah. So when I use it, I get a lot of, um, oh, blah, 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 you're this, you're that. And it's just like, it's like whatever. I don't really care about it anymore. But in the beginning, it was a, it was a massive negative and it was a massive like, oh gosh, this is horrible, like kind of thing. Have you got thick skin or what's it like for you? Do you do you get it, let it get to you? Nah, you know, like, so I went to an all girls school, okay? Like mm. if anyone out there has been to an all girls school, you develop a thick skin. Is and it? yeah, you do, you develop a thick skin. And and even anyone who goes through secondary school, you will develop a thick skin because of what people are like around you. Because when you're a kid, you, you're like just a kid, isn't it? Yeah. And, um, Unless you're one of the popular kids that no one bullies or something. Yeah, like pretty yeah. much. But even yeah. them themselves, they have to develop a thick skin because they're bullying for a reason, remember? Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'd say I don't let it get to me massively anymore. But in the beginning, especially with Lord Sugar, especially Twitter, because I had not used Twitter before. Mm. I, I, I had only downloaded it because of Lord Sugar, because obviously he was tweeting about me, so I need to be on there. So... When he first started tweeting about it, I was looking at him, oh my God. I'm like, oh no, like, like it's so mean. The, the stuff that people say on there is horrid and Twitter's probably the worst for anything. So I kind of just got used to it. It's kind of like, whatever, I don't care who's, who's on top, me. Mm. <laughs> me, <laughs> I don't care. No, I'm joking. I'm joking, I'm joking. But for me, it was genuine. It, it was like this, right? Cause somebody said something to me. Somebody was like, somebody was like, they are literally sitting in their bedroom, leaving you a hate comment and you are Lord Sugar's business partner. So like, why should I let it get to me? If, you know, if somebody better than me, not not like I'm better than anyone, but if somebody who's like, I look up to, or I think is amazing, or, I, or I respect, yeah. yeah, then it might get to you. If yeah. they say something, it will hurt me. But if somebody who I don't even know and I don't care about says something, yeah. well, I don't care. Why should you care? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You, know, you never know where it come from. So what sort of advice would you leave these future entrepreneurs? I think... I want to leave advice for, for young people, right? Mm. Not you oldies, no. I'm leaving advice for young, you teenagers and stuff. When you're young, you've got nothing to lose. Look, you've got a roof over your head. 
your parents are probably not going to kick you out anytime soon. If you're 16, 17, 18, now is the time to jump in and start something, anything, mm. and see where it can grow. Like, look what I did. I never, ever expected this to grow to what it became. For me, it was a little bit of extra money, that's all. So start young because you've got no responsibilities and just see what you see where you can go in life. See where it goes, yeah. What does success mean to you? Um, I love that I started that with, um, that didn't sound very good, but... Um, yeah, have a good think about it. Just, it. it just... What the hell does success mean to me? I don't know. Like, it's just, it's just. Okay, so okay, let me let me ask it in a different way. Yeah. Okay. When you picture your life in twenty years' time, mm. what do you envision it to be like? I don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow, let alone in twenty years. Okay, <laughs> what would you idea. want it to be like? <laughs> you know what it is, yeah. Because I'm so young, because I'm literally twenty. Like I was nineteen like a month ago. Come on. I think people forget. I don't have everything figured out. Yeah. I don't, and I don't know what my plan is. I don't know what I'm going to be like. I don't know what my goal is my end goal I'm literally just living every day as it comes and for me I guess success is growth right being better than I was yesterday and 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 just being better in general becoming a better person a better entrepreneur like just 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 growth pretty much and final question Mm -hmm. um how much is a jewelry on average uh between 20 to 30 pounds okay so if we were to give away if I was to give away a gift card do you do gift cards yeah why not okay yeah so if I was to give you a gift card to a subscriber right now yeah how much would it be I don't know uh, let's give a one random subscriber a hundred pound gift card. All right, cool. Hundred pound gift card. All you got to do is subscribe, like the podcast. And what I want you to do to make sure I know you've watched the podcast is comment your favorite thing that Armani has said or Armani stands by. Um, I think that's a good rule, yeah, right? That's great. Yeah. yeah. And we'll pick the winners the Sunday, no, the Saturday following this. I don't know the dates because I don't know You can announce it in your next video. Sorry? You can announce it in your next video. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I got paid I'm for taking marketing. over I'm yeah. taking over <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll announce the winner in the next video as well we'll put it in the comment on the next video but yeah so make sure you do that and until then Amani I want to thank you very very much for coming on to CEO Cast, sharing me. your story and your advice with the future entrepreneurs um, and until then guys I'll catch you on the next episode next week on CEO Cast. Oh.